please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Well, isn't this just fantastic? So I noticed the video doing its rounds, a video being shared about over Twitter, a 52 second clip video concerning Steve Shives, somebody who I was considering doing a longer format documentary video talking about because his notoriety during the time of the anti-feminist, anti-SGW skeptic clones, his obscurity for a little while, his renaissance courtesy of Star Trek and a shift in his own content to match. I thought that would be quite fascinating. But in the middle of that Star Trek sci-fi geeky content, which is actually not bad, he made a video talking about trans kids and the rights obsession with minding other people's business. And it intrigued me. Now part of me would want to go to the 52 second clip and then try and find the context of where that clip is relevant. And it's important. Context always matters. And let's face it, the easiest way to get the full context would be to reach out to the creator and perhaps get some information from them instead, or watch the video. But I can't contact him, I'm blocked on Twitter, so is all of Twitter in fact. Although if you Google Steve Shives, you will see some of his tweets there, you know, on the Google search page. And I wouldn't bother with Instagram because he just posts the same picture of himself, the exact same look on his face, just with a minor difference in angle and lighting. So what we're going to do, we're going to go through the 52 second clip at video because I'm sure we can glean some information from that, but then we can understand why people were a bit irritated by this clip alone. And then we're going to try and find the exact point from his video where that was said, play the before and after so we have the context. If the kids and their parents and their doctors all decide puberty blockers or some other form of gender affirming care is appropriate, what's that got to do with you? On the face of it, this is quite a broad question to answer. A difficult one because of that alone. You can say, ah, oh, you should mind your own business. But the wider implications are where people really want to latch on. Children should not be put on puberty blockers. The increased rate of detransitioning many of whom after surgeries that are hard dangerous. Parents who have taken their children abroad to force the surgeries onto their children. It is a dangerous area to traverse. Why is it anyone's business? Because if people are told they have to accept it, they need to understand it as well. If people are told they must accept it, they need to understand. Simply saying mind your own business when one does not understand does not help them come to terms with something that isn't any of their business but they must accept at the same time while simultaneously conceding this could surely be a form of mutilation of a child. No child can make an adult decision. You included the child in that, by the way, as being a part of the decision making. Children don't have any decisions on this table. They really don't. They are malleable, easy to manipulate. They will do what their parents tell them to do. Same with doctors. I don't know, I've heard some of these treatments can cause permanent changes, you know? I don't think it's right. In a child's body, 100% correct, and I know what you're trying to do, I, I get it. But unintentionally, you're correct. To do that to a child, I mean, what if they change their minds? Yes, Steve, what happens if they change their mind and this has gone too far? What happens then, Steve? You have robbed someone of a childhood. A childhood forced upon them to be something they are not. We all live with regrets in our lifetime. That one is a substantial regret. A potentially substantial regret at that. One that could be catastrophic and highly damaging to one's mental health. It is why an adult must make an adult decision on an adult body, not a child. This condescending delivery is quite something. First of all, there's not a human being ever born who has any reason why they need to give a shit about what you've heard Second of all, since you're so concerned about kids receiving medical care that could cause permanent changes to their bodies, which they might later regret, I assume you're all for outlawing circumcision? Yes, actually. I am 100% in favor of outlawing male genital mutilation. It is no longer required, unless medically needed, where there is a choking accident that happens, by the way, with penises. Yeah, excluding medical emergencies, it does not need to happen, therefore, I fully support it being banned. I have always supported it. Anyone that disagrees, you're welcome to that opinion. 
but you are wrong. Well, I think you are anyway. And I'll maintain that stance because it isn't circumcision, it is mutilation of a child's body. So I at least have a leg to stand on here. I do not believe these kind of life-altering, changing things should happen to a child. If an adult, when they're an adult, decides, oh, you know what, I want to have that skin off my cock removed. They can do it if they want. It's elective at that point. Your body, your choice, right? I believe in that too, by the way. It's called consistency, Steve. The point you just made doesn't resonate as well as you think it does. You might have got a considerable amount of positive feedback in your comments, no doubt policed by yourself, but I promise you it doesn't work as well as you think. That was the best bit of the entire video. So now we need to go to your video on your channel where everything is the fault of the right, right? Okay. Everything is the fault of the right who cannot understand progress, everyone. Progress. And how important it is to respect other people's business, which is somewhat ironic, considering the right cherish each other's own personal business, private property, private business, ownership of certain things, civil rights, human rights, the Bill of Rights. Do I need to continue with that? By the way, there are people on the left who also do, but apparently you're playing reductio ad absurdum. I'm going to return the favor. Last week, Florida governor and little man with funny boots who wants to be president, Ron DeSantis, signed a series of bills into law that impose further restrictions on the rights of transgender people, including severely limiting their access to gender-affirming health care. Florida Senate Bill 254 is a law that prohibits gender-affirming care for anyone under the age of 18, places restrictions on adult patients accessing this care, and allows the state to take temporary custody of children who may be receiving gender-affirming care now or in the future. Puberty blockers were banned. I thought it right to provide context because it turns out I pay attention. Another bars public school teachers, faculty members, and even students from referring to people using pronouns that don't align with their birth assigned gender. The interesting thing about what you're going to do is you're going to act and address this on a rather national scale, big scale. Forgetting Florida is much like any state within the US, a country on its own, basically, within its own like system. The governor is the top dog. They were voted in. They are the color they are because their politics have changed. And that is where Governor Ron DeSantis mirrors them, echoes them. You have to respect their right to have chosen this path and this future in accordance with what they now currently believe. And another bans trans people from using bathrooms or changing rooms in government buildings that match their gender identity. Yeah, this one seems a little inconsequential. Majority of people I know seem to back the idea that they don't really care where people use the toilet. Just use it and get out. Don't do what others have done, and that is go in and harass other people, make them uncomfortable, and make it difficult for them to use the rest stop as a rest stop as opposed to a gathering ground for conversation, which is what some do anyway. Most people who care about trans issues and actually seek to engage in discussions about them in good faith already know this, but just so it's clear, trans kids receiving gender-affirming care, including being prescribed puberty blockers, is not controversial in the medical community. You do realize those that contest what you're now saying care as well though, right? You're acting as if you hold a moral high ground, which is why you used to get so much crap and you'll undoubtedly for this if you didn't police so much of what you get in because your echo chamber is so ironclad. Many find this contestable, detestable, controversial because they want to protect children. Do you remember that thing I mentioned about understanding? Yeah, it works both ways, dipshit. It's the result of decisions made that include the trans child, their parents, and their doctors. It's not done lightly. It's not done because of a fad. It's not something adults are forcing on their kids to try and make them trans. And yet, if you looked outside of your Zorb echo chamber long enough, you'd notice there is a rise in people detransitioning. This raises questions. In the United Kingdom, our gender clinic, Tavistock, is getting sued to high heaven because of malpractice because of this because people don't know how to deal with this properly. The answer should be the same. You mentioned trans child. They don't get a decision in this. You know this. Look in Texas. Parents broke up. The son lives with the mother, who is forcing the child to be trans, and the Texas court sided with the mother. Yet when the child is with their father, they don't want to be trans, they want to be a boy. Gender-affirming care for trans people, children and adults, is accepted and supported by multiple professional medical associations 
all over the world, including the World Health Organization, the American Medical Association, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Psychiatric Association, the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, and I could go on, but you get the idea. Yes, America is the center of the world, the only country in the world, and at the same time, you're forgetting people have a different opinion to you. Florida is not Steve Shives. Steve Shives does not speak for Floridians. How is this so difficult for you to understand? A difference of opinion leads to change in politics. That change will undoubtedly rub some up the wrong way that don't agree with it. But you can't impact that change unless you are in Florida. The current conservative obsession with oppressing, harassing, and erasing trans people, which has infected not only the culture of my country, the United States, but also the UK, as well as many other parts of the world. Tell me you know nothing about the United Kingdom without telling me you know nothing about the United Kingdom. Tavistock, the only gender clinic in the United Kingdom, got shut down for breaching multiple laws, forcing transitions onto children, who then detransitioned because they felt pressured into transitioning. Go figure, an adult forcing a child to do something it don't want to do. There's a word for that. Starts with G and ends with rooming. Now, would you do me a favor? Keep my country's name out of your chinless, bald, plonker-faced mouth. Is completely out of line with the current medical and scientific consensus on the subjects of sex and gender and how trans people ought to be treated, medically and socially speaking. Medically and socially are two totally separate things. Much research, in fact, does not equate for the damage done by puberty blockers, because this is genuinely a grey area. There isn't much research on it, and when there is research of it, there is very little of it. There isn't enough to formulate concrete basis, fact, high probability, or opinion. In fact, the vast majority of what you will find is based entirely on asserted opinion. This is very disingenuous, Mr. Shives. I expected better of you. Do I need to insert here, citation needed, arbiter of truth, tell me more, and another citation needed? But it lines up perfectly with what I consider to be one of the defining characteristics of the conservative worldview, the compulsive and hypocritical need to mind other people's business. But Steve, won't someone please think of the children before they get on their high ground and tell others to mind their own business on something while talking on a grander scale, reducing it to a much smaller scale to make a grander point that cannot translate on a smaller scale? Give a Republican half a chance and they'll drone on for hours about the sacred value of individual liberty and how the greatness of the United States lies in the fact that all people are allowed to make their own choices and live their lives as they see fit without the government inserting itself into people's private affairs with regulations and restrictions. You're not a Republican yet you've made a remarkably long video on a moral high ground thing where you think you're right cause providing no evidence no citations to back what you believe to be true or fact. And look, some people do actually live out those values. Some Republicans, Libertarians, Conservatives, whatever label they choose to identify with, seem to make a genuine effort to give others the same consideration they demand for themselves and generally stay out of other people's business unless absolutely necessary. Hold up, did you just lump Libertarians in with Conservatives? I did think they were the same. In my country, we have Labour, who are your Democrats, Conservatives, who are your Conservatives, and then we have the Liberal Democrats, who are, well, power-hungry morons, who have all the consistency of someone passing a vindaloo. And good for them. I mean, they still vote for right-wing candidates and serve as obstacles for necessary and overdue progress, so fuck them in general. But on this one thing, Good for them. There are many people I follow online that don't generally insert themselves into politics because when they do, they do things like this. They form what they consider to be an opinion and present it as immutable fact, ignoring and having a blind eye towards their own candidates because they're right and social change and progress. Thinking progress can always be right is a rather narrow interpretation of what right is. Or correct, just in case someone misunderstands that. However, there are quite a few Republicans, conservatives, 
etc., who seem to have carved out some fairly spacious exceptions in their devotion to the principle of individual liberty. For such a person, and they'd probably never express it like this, individual liberty means that all people are allowed to make their own choices and live their lives as they see fit, as long as I agree with those choices and they live their lives in ways that I understand and which don't make me uncomfortable. Now, I'm not a conservative, libertarian, or a, what you'd call a Democrat. I don't really align with the party, and I'm inserting this on purpose so you don't think I'm just dunking on Steve because of politics or difference of a politics. No, no, no. It's actually because he is acting as if his interpretation applies or is correct. He is wrong. From what I have heard, it's less about that and more about obeying the rule of law. Individual liberty that obeys the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, things like that. Now, of course, things need to be changed when society changes. But your interpretation of this seems to be a bit skewed. We all know why, and it's what got you into so much bother several years ago. The persecution of trans people and most cruelly trans kids is just one manifestation of this mindset, this presumed right to tell other people how to live. The same can be applied to those who disagree with the interpretation of the information. That's the point here. You are asserting that people are disagreeing with that choice. No, they disagree with the fact the choice is even there for children in the first place. Because children cannot make an informed decision. It's the suspicion, the judgment, the offense taken at harmless things that have nothing to do with you. Do you mean like Karens? They hold no statutory power by themselves, but it is thoughts and feelings like this which sit at the root of laws like those in that anti-trans legislation just enacted in Florida by DeSantis. It's the sadism of it. I feel like you really want to say, won't someone please think of the children? And sadism? Oh my life, how stupid are you? It's not sadism. It is how Florida has voted and how Florida believes they are doing what is right for them. Of course, there are people who disagree. No state is uniform red, 100% Republican or 100% Democrat. There are some that are massively blue and massively red. There will always be disagreements. But Florida has voted twice now for DeSantis. Florida is red for the time being. They voted for this, they agree with this, the majority do in fact. If you want to impact change, you do not do it by attacking them for believing that. You show them, if you believe you're right, how they are wrong. This intolerance and this tactic of intolerance is tired, Mr. Steve. You know this, yet you are still truly blind. Your tactics don't work. And using a global message on a smaller scale is remarkably narrow-minded of you. It shows how unbelievably intolerant you are of those in Florida who disagree with you. Many from different cultures that aren't just American. I think for the sake of it, I could do this all day and I don't have time for it. But if you want a part two with me continuing with this video where we still haven't even gotten to his part yet from the 52 second clip bit, let me know in the comments, all right? If we get a certain number of likes, let's say a thousand likes, yeah, no, 1,500. Yeah, that's a big number. I don't get that. You'll get a part two.